Hi, everybody. I'm Brittany Lewis, a breaking news reporter here at Forbes. Joining me now is my Forbes colleague, money and politics reporter, Kyle Con mullins Kyle, thanks for coming on once again. Always great to be here, Brittany. Thanks for having me. It has been a really hectic week in the political news world. On Sunday, as we know, President Biden did drop out of the 2024 race. Within days, Vice President Kamala Harris has become the likely Democratic nominee. And you're reporting that although the polls are very close on between her and Trump, win or lose, the election will be lucrative for Kamala Harris. So first, to start off the conversation, what is her net worth? So Forbes is estimating that Kamala Harris, along with her husband, Doug Emhoff, uh, is worth about $8 million. That is up from $7 million in 2021, um, so it's grown a little bit over time, and that's mostly due to an increase in the value of her home in Los Angeles. So you've reported this interesting fact. In the short term, she'll actually make out better if she loses. That's obviously she'll make out better financially if she loses. How so? So we should caveat this whole conversation with Kamala Harris isn't making decisions about whether or not to run for president and run for office with the, uh, you know, with her, her bank account in mind. We can, we can pretty safely assume that. But with all of that said, um, I think it's important to look at, uh, in order to answer this question, will she make out better if she wins or loses? Um, let's look at previous vice presidents. Uh, start with Mike Pence, who of course lost the 2020 election. Um, you know, he was able to quadruple his net worth in just a couple of years after he left office um, from about a million dollars to about $4 million. Uh, and Joe Biden, another good example, he chose not to run in 2016. Um, and between then and when he ended up running in 2019, 2020, um, he and his wife, Jill, raked in $17 million of income. Um, they increased their net worth from about $2.5 million to $8 million, oh, just in a couple of years. Um, what does all that tell you? Um, it tells you that they can make a lot of money on the speaking circuit, uh, writing memoirs. Uh, Mike Pence did some consulting as well. Joe Biden did some teaching. Um, you know, these are these are very plush, uh, tried and true gigs for ex-politicians. Um, so, you know, in the short term, Vice President Harris could you know lean into these methods and make up pretty well. So let's still go on with the hypothetical she does lose. How would her husband, second gentleman Doug Emhoff, contribute to the fortune here? Yeah, I think Doug Emhoff is the other really big piece of the equation here because, um, you know, Mike Pence's wife and, uh, and Jill Biden were not enormous contributors to their fortunes. Doug Emhoff was actually the breadwinner um, and has been throughout their relationship until now. Um, Doug Emhoff, before uh, Kamala Harris became vice president, when she was still a senator from California, um, he was an entertainment lawyer in Los Angeles in private practice. He was making over a million dollars a year. Um, he has a he was making a significant fortune, and so if she were to lose uh, and you know were to be put back into private uh, private life, uh, Doug Emhoff could go back to working that much sooner. It's kind of an opportunity cost question, um, and so whereas right now he's teaching at Georgetown and he's. Uh, you know, I, and um, doing all of his duties as the second gentleman, um, that's a lot less lucrative than, you know, being an entertainment lawyer in private practice. So now let's go out down the other hypothetical road here. She does win, she gets inaugurated in January. What are some of those monetary perks of being commander in chief? Sure, so let's start with the obvious. Um, you get a taxpayer funded mansion to live in, rent free, the White House. Um, you also get a $50,000 expense allowance for things that are related to you doing your duties as president. Um, and she would get a salary bump. Uh, she currently makes about $235,000 as vice president. She'd get a bump to $400,000, uh, uh, you know, uh, a year. Additionally, um, she also gains access to a pension, presidential pension, which is significantly more generous than the uh, pension that is available to the vice president. Um, so she would that we, Forbes estimates that that pension, uh, which would pay her the salary of a cabinet secretary for the rest of her life, um, it would be worth about $1.7 million if she only served one term as president, and it would be worth about $1.1 million if she served, served two terms as president. So all of these are these kinds of financial perks that come with being president while you're in office. So you write for Forbes that the presidency is an exercise in delayed gratification. How so? Yeah, I really think that that's the, the, the key point here is, yes, there are presidential, there are perks that come financially with being the president, but they still have to pay for their own groceries. Um, they still have to pay for their own personal legal expenses. It's not a free lunch. Um, it's really after the presidency that presidents are able to make an enormous amount of money. 
I think the best example is the Clintons. Um, between 2001 and 2016, when Hillary Clinton ran for president, um, they made over $240 million. We know that because they released all of their tax returns for those years. Uh, and they did that, again, it was, they hit the speaking circuit hard. Um, they wrote books. Uh, Hillary was a senator for a little while, um, and she was, uh, you know, Secretary of State, um, and and Bill was doing, uh, you know, speaking, writing, all the all the same stuff. Um, so they they made an enormous amount of money, which helped because when they left the White House, they were roughly broke. Um, there are other examples, though, from other previous presidents. Uh, Trump, of course, after he left office, he ended up founding Truth Social, the Twitter knockoff that has inflated his net worth by billions of dollars after it went public. Um, George Bush, he made $7 million, George W. Bush, I should say, uh, he made $7 million from his book contract, and he's made tens of millions of dollars from speeches. The Obamas uh, made $65 million from their book contract, and they also signed a Netflix deal. We don't even know how much they made from that, but I'm sure it was worth plenty of money. So when you think about those ex-presidents who separate themselves a little bit from politics more, do they make out better or worse financially based on your reporting? It's hard to say, um, and the reason why it's hard to say is because they've separated themselves from politics, um, we're unlikely to get the kinds of financial disclosures that would tell us exactly how much they're making and how much they're worth at any given time. So the Clintons, we know how much they made because Hillary Clinton ran for president 16 years later and released all of her financial records for the previous, uh, you know, almost two decades. Um, Donald Trump, we know because he's running for president again, and also his lucrative, uh, you know, the, 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 the thing that made him all the money was public company that we were able to track. The Obamas and the Bushes, uh, they haven't run for office. So again, or their spouses haven't run for office. So um, it's a little bit harder to know. We're relying on you know, reporting and inside sources and that kind of thing. Kyle Conmollins, per usual, I always appreciate your reporting. Thanks for joining me. Great to talk to you, Brittany. Thanks so much.